Hey gang, Scott here. I've got a tip for you today in Lightroom about saving masks with presets and how this can really speed up your workflow. It's useful. If you didn't know this, you can save masks in your presets. And for certain types of masks, these are really helpful to get that look that you've uh, built up in one of your photos and want to apply it in a bunch of other places and in photos that aren't necessarily the same scene. Uh, so this will be best served by an example and I'll, I'll show you how this works. And I'll probably be back in a couple of days with another video uh, that leverages this idea to, uh, to build something up with a little system for yourself so that you you can get a speedier workflow for things that you do often. I'll leave that as a little little teaser right now, but let me show you what this means here with, with saving masks in our presets. Well, this photo here, I've done a bit of work, including some masks, and let me open up the masking area here. So I have three different masks applied to this photo, and these are based on luminance range masks here and here. This happens to be a sky mask. But we know for masking types in Lightroom, we have subjects, skies, brushes, gradients, color ranges, all sorts of different things. If you're not familiar with the improvements in Lightroom's masking, I've got a different video that goes through all of them. So check that one out. It'll give you some background on what we're doing here. But for certain types of masks, when you are affecting the photo as a whole, but uh, specific tonal regions, like in a luminance range mask, or specific colors, like a color range mask, or the sky, or the subject. Um, even things like the gradients and the radials, where you end up with a pin that you can quickly maneuver and move on a different photo, those are all good things to consider including in a preset. The only one I wouldn't say is the brush, because usually when you're using the brush, it is specific to the content of the photo. Like in this scene here, if I were to brush something through this river, well then, when I went to a different photo that didn't have a river in it, and I apply that preset, I'm gonna get this weird looking, you know, scribble <laughs> through the middle of my photo. So, um, so maybe not including the brush, but other things we can include in presets. If you didn't know that, that's kind of the point of this video. I'll go up to this preset here, new preset, and over here we have this masking area. I'll just check all boxes. And one thing is we do see a little warning symbol next to mask number three, which is the one selecting the sky. It's saying, hey, uh, I've got this AI powered selection. When you apply that to uh, another photo, I'll need to go recompute that. Fine, no problem. It's exactly what I want. And let's just call this um, preset with masks. Okay, I'll create that. And now when I go to another photo, I can use this preset, including those masks, and I'll get that leverage of luminance range mask, sky selection, all the settings I've done with that, but it won't be, um, it, it will apply to different scenes. So let me go to another photo here and find that preset over in my user presets. Click on that. All right, so things have been applied here and the photo certainly looks very different. Let's open up the masking area and see what we have. We have, that first mask that was doing a luminance range mask, but notice the luminance range is specific to this photo. It, uh, Lightroom didn't just like save the pixels of the mask. It more said, I'm going to remember this luminance range, what you've defined here in the masking area and apply that to your new photo. The same thing with this one here. Now this top mask, we have that little warning. Remember that? It said we have to update things. Well, over here in Select Sky, we can just click Update, and then Lightroom goes and selects this particular sky. We can see it found the sky it was over here in this photo. It was not the same mask as the other one. And now I've applied this uh, relatively intricate preset to a completely different photo, leveraging things like luminance range masks, sky selection, and you can extend this to color ranges, to radials, and it really does open up some interesting possibilities for more streamlined workflow with what I'll describe as accent presets. I'm gonna come back with another video about those in a few days. So uh, if you're interested, come on back to the channel in a, in a couple of days and we'll have that posted for you. But the, this, is, um, this is really cool stuff, being able to create some very powerful, powerful presets 
without the uh, need to recreate lots of different masks. So if you haven't explored using these luminance range masks or color range mask, get into them because you can build up a, a very powerful library of looks that will be uh, more universal across a wider set of photos. Hope you found the video useful. Got questions? Drop them below. And until next time, my name's Scott Davenport. Have fun.